And so the rolling border hills provide the backdrop to this scene here at Mansfield Park as the Australians take the field. An Australian side containing only three players, Tim Lane, Greg Burrow and Bill Coltraft, who haven't played in an international. Eight of them were in the 28-9 win over Wales. Michael Liner switches from second 5-8 to standoff half. They've an all-Queensland back division with the exception of Nick Farr-Jones, but a heavy pack has an all-New South Wales breakaway unit, and they're led again by the tour captain, Andrew Slack. The south of Scotland can boast 210 caps, six of Scotland's Grand Slam squad there, a landmark for Jim Rennick, uh, a south record for him with his 63rd appearance for the district, a key figure, the uncapped standoff, Kelso's Andrew Kerr, and in the pack, number one there is Gregor McKenzie of Selkirk, who was preferred to Scotland's Grand Slam captain, Jim Aitken. The new captain of the south this season is Scotland's most capped hooker, Colin Deans. Oh, there's one of my pupils there, and I'm pleased to see he's behaving so well. Dodge then. Got the height. Flags it up. And Peter Dodge is the hero of all the borders at the moment because he's cut the deficit to uh, six points to three, giving a lot of pleasure to the crowd there. And they've got about seven minutes to go to half time. South driving and Laidlaw feeding. Kerr. That looks a good one, it's got a bit of distance on it and it's got height as well. Roger Gould did well, but he was robbed. Driving on, John Jeffrey going, and Jeffrey gets the try. Oh no, the referee has chopped it off, he may have been offside. John Jeffrey waiting for the applause, but in fact I think may have been adjudged offside as the ball was kicked through. Big deep breath. Little Twitter, you'll notice. There it goes. Twitter and plonk. It's all the way. So Peter Dodds of Gala ties the score at six points all. They've played six minutes of the second half. Break away at the back by uh, Colcraft. And a loud blast there. Is it a penalty to the south? Can they be handling in the tackle? Yes, must get to your feet. And Steve Cutler is astonished. So, once again, the uh, dramatic moment for Peter Dodds. Dodds looks a better kick. Yes, it's there. The hats are in the air, the arms are in the air, and you can see the spring in Peter Dodge's step. His third penalty goal of the match, and the south of Scotland are in the lead, and they've about three minutes to go. The referee's whistle has gone for the end of the match, and the south of Scotland have done it. Nine points to six, the winners. Great joy all round Mansfield Park here. Australia undoubtedly had their chances, especially at kicking goals. But that's the final outcome. The South winners as they were in 1966. 13-0 then, 9-6 today. They enhanced their record as the only Scottish district side ever to beat a major touring side by repeating that 1966 win over the Wallabies. A Saturday game against any touring team is, is a big, big honour for any player and it was a big honour for the south of Scotland that day, you know, to be playing Australia. Um, especially when, you know, they went on that year and, and won the Grand Slam, beat all the other nations and things like that. So it was a memorable day that day. And I must just ask you, at the end of it, you seem to run off with the ball. Have you still got it? I've still got it um, hidden in my house. Um, it was a hard thing to get at the end of the game because John Robertson, the, the then secretary, um, was a terrible man because the first thing that he did um, after a game was came and grabbed the jerseys and, and the balls and everything like that to make sure that, that everything was there because you know there was no money in these days to, to buy other ones and things like that but I managed to get it hidden and, and um, get it home and things like that so I've still got it today so it's a nice pe piece of memorabilia for me. The result itself we went to about 6-6 uh, six, six, with about three minutes to go we the, the, the very capable boot of, of Peter Dudds and then within the last three minutes, the Australians got somewhat enthusiastic in a ruck, uh, purely because of the fact that they were sick of seeing McGarkey uh, uh, and uh, Eric Paxton and JJ. And uh, they got carried away a little bit. They presented us with a penalty, 
and the very efficient boot of Peter Dodds gave the South a first-class victory. I think the whole thing about the South to me was the bond that we had as players. When you played for your clubs, when you know, I played for Kelso against Melrose, against White Miller, you fought hammer and tong, tooth and nail, and you wouldn't give an inch, literally kick the living daylights each other. But then when you're together for the South, you're as one, you're one team, you came together and you basically kicked the living daylights out of Edinburgh, Glasgow and Northern Midlands and that's why they won the championship. So there was a strong bond, it's always been there uh, and as you can see from the part that we're having tonight, it's still there. And the border crowd simply rose to that haka and here they'll be rising to their South of Scotland team soon because there are ten international players in this team, four in the backs and six in the forwards, only Don Leddingham the left wing and uh, big Tom Smith the lock forward have not had experience beyond senior district representative rugby. Lovely sunny day here, the pitch in excellent condition and right at the tail of the line out there for the South, number seven Brian Hegarty of Hoyk, one of the six Hoyk men in the side. Loveridge, Taylor, Peter Dodge, the Gala fullback, caught immediately just in front of his own post. Smith of Gala tried to get it, it's fed back now to Loveridge. Loveridge, oh what a chance and it's a try for Stu Wilson right at the beginning. And what a devastating start for the All Blacks. Stu Wilson scores his 19th try for New Zealand. Dodge. High enough, long enough, and straight enough. Well, the South badly needed that because it cuts the deficit to just 10 points to three with about three and a half minutes to go to the interval. Houston hasn't found touch. Dodge and Robertson in all kinds of trouble and Bernie Fraser's going to score an opportunist runaway try. And that again is the marvellous bit of following up by Fraser, but in a sense a gift which he took readily. His second try of the match. Give it to Rutherford, out to Cranston, Cranston to Rennick, Rennick to Robertson, Robertson out to Dodds. Dodds, inside to Rennick, Rennick half through, looking for his forwards. That was Robertson to Hegarty, over halfway. In goes Burton Newson, laid it again, out to Cranston, Cranston, out to Leddingham, Leddingham. Oh, and that was an overlap by Rutherford. Rutherford over the 22. Can he make the line chased by Stu Wilson? What a marvellous tackle that was. Crowd really getting excited now. Now it's out there. Along to Cranston. To Rennick. Rennick. Half through. Rennick over the 22. Lovely bit of work. This is it Peter Dodds? Can he make the line? He just lost it over the line. Referee's whistle, I think, goes for the end of the match. And the All Blacks have beaten the South of Scotland by 19 points to three. They maintain their great record against Scottish side. They've now played 22 games in Scotland over the years, and they've yet to be beaten. It's 105 years since the South first played the Springboks at Mansfield. And in these 105 years, we've beaten Australia twice, we've driven with South Africa twice, we've driven with Argentine, we've beaten Fiji, and we've beaten Japan. We've never beat New Zealand, but we've run them close twice. 1938 at Mansfield, Jack Manchester's All Blacks that Linda referred to, that Bill obviously made a big impression on Bill McLaren. Uh, got beat 11-3, but they won 11-8, sorry, but they won the try count 2-1. 1963, Mansfield again, Wilson winner is All Blacks. Got beat 8-0, but the game was in the balance to the last minute when the boy Chris Laidlaw had to drop a goal to win it in injury time. It's a rich and powerful heritage, and to celebrate the night, we've got 48 guys that played for the South, dating back 60 years to Arthur Dunner, Rob Daler, Basher Ingalls, and Derek Brown, that played against Basil Kenyon's Springboks in 1951. Now, the fact that as many of you have turned up here tonight, it has to send a powerful message you just how strong rugby still is in the borders. Memories of the South, the tie, big thing, and you see as a youngster growing up, obviously the the, uh, the South jersey was always a big thing, and you know, you've heard people already probably mention the, this camaraderie that Mel's Vigala, Kelso, Hoyt, Jed, Selkirk, 
whoever it may have been, there was uh, such rivalry amongst each other. But when you played for the South, the passion that you had for the area just was unforgiving. It was amazing that you would you would you would kick lumps out of someone on a Saturday, as others have mentioned, and then suddenly on the Wednesday night you're training for the South to play an inter-district match the following Saturday. It's great to come back and see some old faces tonight, and uh, I just wish there was some more younger guys here to to experience and respect some of the guys that played before me. So, you know, wonderful to come back up and see everyone, and and uh, you know, delight to be an ex-South player. But it's once again the All Blacks to bash up. Stensness, Ronnie Clark, Stensness once again, lovely handling to bash up. Bash up, so clever, and it's Marty Berry going. The feed on there, and it's a lovely try. The New Zealanders are walking away with this match completely. The South have gone for the tap penalty. Brian Redpath, taken on there by Robbie Brown. Redpath again to Chalmers, a chance here. Chalmers half through, feeding on there beautifully to Scott Nicholl, who within a few metres. Well, that's a bit of uh, New Zealand rucking style for you. Bashup feeding out to Zinzanbrook to Stensness. Stensness to Aroni Clark. Still inside the 22. It could be a try for Shane Howard, the fullback. And he is home. The fourth try of the match for Shane Howard, who's having a day to remember here. Tony Stinger is actually positioned, ready to come into the centre. And that's Scott Nicholl along the line to Michael Dodd. Out there to Parker. Parker for the corner. A great score by the little fellow from Melrose, Gary Parker, the scorer. And that's the first try by the South of Scotland against the All Blacks since 1935, believe it or not. Six minutes of the match to go. It's 77 points to five. Twelve handsome tries. Hayes through. Robbie Brown gets it. Red path to Chalmers to Scott Nicholl, missed out everybody to Stanger, Stanger going hard over the 22, super tackle by Howard, and uh, little Gary Parker was in there as well, so both the wingers were right over on that far side, there is Parker, and it was a very good move, but tremendous defence by New Zealand, they missed so few tackles, Erone Clark is against Michael Dodds, Clark inside outside, good tackle by Dodds, now uh, was that immediate, Hewitt churning on, and it's a try for the scrum half, John Preston. <laughs> Referee's whistle has gone for the end of the match, and that has been a genuine spectacular. We are a very proud and one of the strongest bread holds of Scottish rugby, and we need to get that back somehow. The modern game has probably taken some of that away, sadly, for me, because um, you know I, I now ply my trade in England. But I have a still huge and fond memories of what has taught me probably along the years is, is being a borderer, being a Scotsman. You, these bonds you create, being a borderer, never leaves you. And um, I say I'd love to see it grow stronger again. The referee's whistle has gone for the end of the match. And the south of Scotland have done it. Nine points to six, the winners. Great joy all round Mansfield Park here. Australia undoubtedly had their chances, especially at kicking goals. But that's the final outcome. The South winners as they were in 1966. They enhanced their record as the only Scottish district side ever to beat a major touring side by repeating that 1966 win over the Wallabies.